This college football season has not been very kind to head coaches so far. There are many guys going into the season who are on the hot seat, but already some have been told to pack their bags. The first one was Scott Frost at Nebraska, who was out after disappointing and losing to Georgia Southern at home. After that, you had Herm Edwards, who brought Arizona State into scandal and just wasn't really winning games there. Thirdly, you had Jeff Collins, who after doing nothing for three and a half years at Georgia Tech, was finally fired. Then, this weekend, we got hit with two more firings. The first one was Carl Durrell from Colorado. Back in the day, he coached at UCLA, where he took over the Colorado job in 2020, and actually won Pac-12 Coach of the Year. That seems like a long time ago, as Colorado's probably been the worst Power 5 program over the last two years, and he was relieved of his duties. Then, just a couple hours later, we found out that Wisconsin decided to fire Paul Christ. Honestly, this one did come as a shock to me at first, but after looking into it more, it does seem that Wisconsin may have made the right decision. In today's video, we're going to talk about the rise and fall of Coach Christ, go through his Wisconsin tenure, and why he was ultimately fired. I'm also going to give you a little background on their new head coach, Jim Leonard, and we're just going to talk about some Wisconsin football. But before we get into it, be sure to subscribe as we're on the road to 100k, leave a like if you want to support the channel, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know another player, topic, or coach I can cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about the tragic downfall of Paul Christ. In order to understand what went wrong for Coach Christ, we first need to go back in time. He was born in 1965 in the city of Madison, Wisconsin, so to say the Badgers ran in his blood would be an understatement. His father was the head coach at the local University of Wisconsin, Platteville, and he would become a three-time letterman in both football and basketball there, and would go on to play for the University of Wisconsin. He'd play both tight end and quarterback, and would eventually graduate in 1998. He didn't have any sort of NFL future, so he went straight into coaching. He became a graduate assistant at West Virginia in 1989, and then would move on to the San Antonio Riders as a receivers, running backs, and tight ends coach. In 1993, he'd go to his dad's alma mater as the offensive coordinator at Platteville, before he'd take the quarterback job for the Ottawa Rough Riders. In 1995, he'd become the offensive coordinator at Illinois State, and then he was the OC for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 96. He was seemingly floating around this OC quarterback job for quite a while, as he then went to Oregon State for a year, before he'd become the tight ends coach for the San Diego Chargers. He was there for two years before he'd take the tight ends job at Wisconsin. Barry Alvarez obviously noticed his coaching talent, but he would lose him. He'd go back to Oregon State as the offensive coordinator in 2003, before he'd come back to be the co-offensive coordinator in 2005 for the Badgers. From 2006 to 2011, he'd be promoted to the main offensive coordinator at Wisconsin, before he would take the head coaching job at Pittsburgh. Christ had quickly flown up the coaching radar and was quickly becoming one of the bigger names in the sport. In year one at Pittsburgh, he had Tino Sinceri at the quarterback spot, Ray Graham as a running back, and Mike Shanahan as a receiver. The team was pretty balanced, and in their last year in the Big East would go 6-7 and seven, where they would lose in the BBVA Compass Bowl. Chris would lead the Panthers into the ACC Conference, and in 2013, the team would go 7-6. and six. This was a new era of pit football, as Tom Savage became the quarterback, James Conner would emerge as the team's new star running back, and then we saw the rise of Tyler Boyd and Devin Street. Chris did a tremendous job in 2013, as the Panthers would go 7-6, and six, this time winning the Little Caesars Bowl. In year three, he'd have his third quarterback as Chad Wojcik would take over. James Conner would rush for nearly 1,800 yards and 26 touchdowns, and Tyler Boyd became one of the best receivers in the country, catching 78 passes for 1,261 yards and eight scores. The Panthers would end up going six and six, where they would go to the Armed Forces Bowl. But before that bowl game could happen, Chris would get an opportunity of a lifetime. Brett Bielema was going to leave Wisconsin to take the Arkansas job, so they now had to find a new coach. They went back to their old offensive coordinator and decided they were to hire the alum, Paul Christ. Christ was introduced as the head coach of Wisconsin football, and he would now lead them into their next era. The fan base was excited for what Christ was going to do, and in 2015, Wisconsin had a pretty good team. They returned a veteran quarterback in Joel Stave, had three solid running backs in Dare Ogunbowale, Taiwan Deal, and Corey Clement, and were led by Alex Erickson, Robert Wheelwright, and Troy Fumagalli at the receiver spot. While Wisconsin was good, they'd have a very tough first game. In week one, they were matched up with Alabama on a neutral site, and in that game, they lost 35-17. That's a very difficult coaching debut for anyone, and no one really expected them to win that game. In week 2, they'd blank Miami of Ohio, and then they'd beat Troy and Hawaii and get the 3-1. and one. On the first Saturday of October, they'd play a tough game against Iowa, in which they'd lose 10-6. to six. This was good old-fashioned Big Ten football, and in Wisconsin fashion, they would bounce back. They beat Nebraska on the road by 2, took care of Purdue, went on the road and beat Illinois, killed Rutgers, and then won by one score against Maryland. After starting out 3-2, and two, the Badgers were now 8-2. and two. They lose another Big Ten game against number 20 Northwestern before they go on the road and beat their arch-rival Minnesota 
31 to 21, giving themselves a 9 and 3 regular season record with a 6 and 2 record in the conference. Unfortunately, they would not get to the Big Ten Championship, but they would still get to play USC in the Holiday Bowl. They won this game 23 to 21. And in Chris's first year, the team went 10 and 3. The expectations were set pretty high moving forwards, and for a while, Chris was looking like he had the program in a great spot. 2016, the team would have to find a new quarterback as Alex Hornibrook would take over. He also split some time with Bart Houston, but for the most part, the Badgers leaned on their run game. Corey Clement became a breakout star and ran for nearly 1,400 yards with 15 touchdowns. Jazz Peavy and Troy Fumagalli were the top two receivers, and guys such as TJ Edwards, TJ Watt, and Dakota Dixon would take over on defense. How would the Badgers end up doing? Well, they'd have another tough opening game. They'd play number five LSU on neutral site, and after a close game, they'd end up having a late interception, and they would win 16 to 14, giving them a huge non-conference victory. In week two, they'd take care of Akron, before they would struggle and only win by seven against Georgia State. The 3-0 Badgers then had a big time matchup against number eight Michigan State, and this game wasn't even close as they go on the road to Michigan State and win 30-6 over the number eight ranked Spartans. Unfortunately, they'd have another difficult road game as they'd now have to play on the road against number four Michigan. This was another good old fashioned Big Ten game as the Wolverines win 14-7. After that, they came back home and lost in overtime to number two Ohio State before they went on the road and beat Iowa. What a difficult stretch that was. The Badgers came out of that with a 5-2 record before they would beat number seven Nebraska at home in an overtime game. After that, they go on the road and beat Northwestern, take care of Illinois at home, beat Purdue on the road, and then won comfortably against their arch rival Minnesota to get back to a 10-2 record. This time, they qualified for the first Big Ten Championship under Crest, where they would lose by seven points to number seven Penn State. They would get selected to play in the Cotton Bowl, where they would play against number 15 Western Michigan. Little did Crest know that he'd be coaching against Coach Fleck that following year, but for now, Crest and the Badgers destroyed the Cinderella Broncos and won 24-16. The team went 11-3, and, and this was now back-to-back -back spectacular seasons under Crist. 2017 would ultimately become the best year under Crist. Alex Hornibrook returned at quarterback, and then they found this random three-star freshman by the name of Jonathan Taylor. He ended up being pretty good, as he ran for 1,977 yards with 13 touchdowns. Taylor put the team on his back, and combining that with A.J. Taylor, Quintez Cephas, and Troy Pumagalli, the Badgers actually had a pretty good offense. Wisconsin would open up with three straight wins against Utah State, Florida Atlantic, and BYU, before they win their first conference game against Northwestern. They went on the road and beat Nebraska, survived a close one at home against Purdue, beat Maryland badly, and then took care of Illinois on the road, and then beat Indiana on the road for a huge matchup with number 20 Iowa. At the time, the Badgers were undefeated, and Iowa was ranked number 20 in the country. Wisconsin put the Hawkeyes to rest pretty quickly, as they won 38-14, and then they went on the road and beat number 24 Michigan 24 to 10. The Badgers were 11 and 0 and had a legitimate chance at going to the college football playoff. To make a statement, they beat Minnesota 31 to 0 and finished the regular season at 12 and 0 before a huge matchup with number 8 Ohio State. This was their second straight Big 10 championship appearance, but unfortunately, the Buckeyes would get the best of them as they would lose 27 to 21, breaking the hearts of Wisconsin fans, and instead they have to settle for the Orange Bowl against Miami. To be fair, Miami was another team whose playoff hopes were busted in the last two weeks, so this is sort of a battle between those two teams. Wisconsin won 34-24 and finished the season with a 13-1 record and a 9-0 conference mark. Somehow, things were getting even better under Coach Christ, but after this season, things slowly started to trickle down. In 2018, Hornibrook and Taylor would return, but they just weren't as good as before. After beating WKU in New Mexico in their first two weeks, they lost by way of a game-winning field goal at home to BYU struggled to put away Iowa, beat Nebraska, and then got outmatched by Michigan. The Wolverines won 38-13, and right now the Badgers were 4-2 midway through the season. They bounced back and beat Illinois, but then they lost on the road to Northwestern, and they were now 5-3. After a win over Rutgers, they lose on the road to number 20 Penn State, before they barely survive in three overtimes against Purdue. Going into the Minnesota game, the Badgers were 7-4 with a 5-3 conference mark, this is not what anyone expected. What was even more unexpected was the fact that this Minnesota team got hot late and then upset and beat the Badgers 37-15 in that arch rivalry matchup. Wisconsin finished with a 7-5 record and a 5-4 mark in the Big Ten, and they were selected to play Miami for the second straight year, in which they won 35-3. 8-5 wasn't obviously a horrible season, but it was not what many people expected. Hopefully it was just a fluke, right? Well, they'd get a new quarterback as Hornibrook would transfer to Florida State, and Jack Cohn would step in. 
Tacoma throw for nearly 3,000 yards and 18 touchdowns, and Taylor would run for over 2,000 yards and 21 touchdowns, but Wisconsin once again had some issues. They plowed through South Florida and Central Michigan in their first two weeks, and then upset number 11 Michigan 35-14. This was going to be Wisconsin's year. They took care of Northwestern, shut out Kent State, and shut out Michigan State, and they were now 6-0. Ohio State was coming up in two weeks, but before then, they'd have an easy tune-up game against Illinois. Unfortunately, Wisconsin would collapse in the last few minutes, and Illinois would go down and kick a game-winning field goal, giving Lovey Smith the biggest victory of his tenure, and this would give Wisconsin their first loss and pretty much derail their playoff hopes. They played very uninspired the next week as they got killed 38-7 by Ohio State. They are now 6-2 midway through the year, and even though their playoff hopes were done, they'd still have an opportunity to go to the Big Ten Championship, but they were still playing for a 10-win season. They'd beat number 18 Iowa by two, take care of Nebraska, kill Purdue, and then they had a huge match with number 8 Minnesota. This was that 2019 team that came out of nowhere, and in a battle for the Big Ten West, Wisconsin would win 38-17, sending the Golden Gophers home, and setting up a rematch with Ohio State, which they were not very competitive in. They ended up losing 34-21, and the team went 10-3. In my opinion, there was no reason for this team to lose to Illinois, and I really wish that Big Ten Championship game would have been a fight for the playoff spot. Instead, they'd have to settle for the Rose Bowl, where Justin Herbert would have a late touchdown, and the Ducks would win 28-27. Chris had now gone 10-4, and, and while a 10-win season was great, it was pretty disappointing for Wisconsin fans as they thought this was the year. 2020 would transition into the next era of Wisconsin football as they'd have a new running back and a new quarterback. Graham Mertz was a highly recruited borderline five-star player and the best quarterback recruit in school history. He was going to take him to the next level. Jalen Berger was also another prep star, and with these two guys, Wisconsin was surely going to have a big 2020 season. In their first game, Mertz put on a show as he went 21 of 22 for 248 yards and four touchdowns, and they killed Illinois 45 to 7. Unfortunately, the team would battle a ton of positive tests, and they'd miss both the Nebraska and the Purdue game. After a blowout victory over Michigan in Week 2, Mertz would struggle against number 19 Northwestern, and they would lose 17 to 7. They're now 2-1, and one, and then they lost at home to Indiana and got beat badly on the road by number 16, Iowa. The team was now 2-3 and three, and barely survived an overtime victory over Minnesota to get back to 500. This team dealt with a lot of off-the-field nonsense, but they'd go into their bowl game against Wake Forest and prove they were a good team as they win 42-28 and finish with a 4-3 and three record. No one really counts the 2020 season that much, but it was the beginning of the end for Christ. Going into 2021, the Badgers were ranked in the top 25 and would have a tough matchup in Week 1 against Penn State. Merch was back at quarterback, Ches Malusi had transferred in from Clemson, and Danny Davis was the top receiver. After a couple of late turnovers by Mertz, number 19 Penn State would win 16-10, putting Wisconsin down 0-1. In week 2, they beat Eastern Michigan, before they had one of the worst performances of the Christ era, as Mertz was horrendous, and they got killed by number 12 Notre Dame, 41-13. Things did not get any better the following weekend, as they lost 38-17 to Michigan, and now the Badgers are 1-3. At this time, though, they found a new running back in true freshman Braylon Allen, who would go on to have an insane season. This would lead to their resurgence, as they went 24-0 over Illinois, 20-14 over Army, and then 30-3 on the road against number 25 Purdue. They are back to over 500, and with a blowout victory over number 9 Iowa, Wisconsin was getting its mojo back. They then went on the road and beat Rutgers, took care of Northwestern at home, and then came back and beat Nebraska. The team was now 8-3 going into their final game, but Coach Flack would get them once again. Minnesota would win 23-13, and this would give Wisconsin an 8-4 record, and fans were not happy about this. They would still get selected to play in the Sun Bowl, though, but they would end up beating the Sun Devils 20-13 to finish with a 9-4 record. Many fans were starting to see the warning signs in front of Christ, but with Braylon Allen back in 2021, and a new offensive coordinator in Bobby Ingram, Maybe they could get Graham Mertz going, and this team could finally put their potential together. Unfortunately, that's not how it would go. In Week 1, they would beat Illinois State 38-0, but that didn't mean anything. In Week 2, Washington State would come to town. Led by a first-year head coach and a new quarterback, Washington State would come in, push Wisconsin around, and win 17-14 in Camp Randall. This was a very shocking game, and Wisconsin fans were furious. In Week 3, they'd come back home and beat New Mexico State, or they'd have a big primetime game on the road against number three Ohio State. This game once again exposed where the Wisconsin program was at, as against another big time Big Ten team, Wisconsin got pushed around and got blown out 52 to 21. They're now two and two on the year, and they looked in a bad spot. Then this past weekend happened. Paul Christ got this job because Bielema left for Arkansas, but after he was fired from Arkansas, spent some time in the NFL, and got rehired at Illinois, he now had his Illini surging. 
Illinois was not afraid of the hostile crowd as they went in, controlled the game, and won 34-10. This is one of the worst losses in recent memory for Wisconsin, and they are now 2-3. and three. Graham Mertz was still terrible, the offense couldn't move, and they're now getting beat in their own stadium by teams they never thought they'd lose to. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, and Wisconsin decided to fire Chris this past Sunday. After going 67-26 and 26 in eight years, making seven straight bowl games, and having four 10-plus win seasons, they decided Chris wasn't good enough, and they fired him. They promoted their longtime defensive coordinator Jim Leonard to the job, and many thought Leonard would be the next guy, but they were afraid of losing him. He even interviewed with the Green Bay Packers to be their defensive coordinator, but Leonard stayed home, and now he will get his chance as the new coach. We'll see how he does, but why did Christ ultimately fail? Well, one, the expectation at Wisconsin is to make Big Ten titles. With them losing at home to Illinois and Ohio State, they were pretty much eliminated from this year's race, so this would have been three straight years without getting to the conference title. Secondly, you don't lose to Minnesota. Chris has dropped a couple of games to the Golden Gophers, and that is a no-no. Third, all that player development in the Wisconsin way was not working as well as they've now been dropping more games and have suffered two bad losses to both Washington State and Illinois this year. They aren't horrible losses, but for Wisconsin standards, they are. Fourthly, the talent gap between them and the top Big Ten teams is seemingly getting wider. In the last few years, every time they've played against the top and the best of the best in the Big Ten, they have seemingly lost or gotten blown out. Finally, overall, the Wisconsin administration gave Chris a chance to make changes this offseason and told him he needed to win. He'd bring in a new offensive coordinator, kept Graham Mertz in there way too long, and I guess his changes just didn't work as the team got off to a 2-3 record, and 0-2 mark in the Big Ten, and Wisconsin said they had enough of him. He wasn't winning the way they expected him to, and now they're hoping Jim Leonard will do the same. But what do you think? If you're a Wisconsin fan, why did Coach Chris get fired? What do you expect of Jim Leonard, and what are your expectations for the Wisconsin program moving forward? If you're a fan of another school, let me know what you think of Wisconsin football. Let me know another player, coach, or topic I could do next. Subscribe if you're new, and check out all of the videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.